Even today, if you look up a molecule or an electron orbiting an atom, you're going to get pictures like this. You might even have been taught that this is how it works, that the electron completes some sort of orbital or allowed set of orbitals. And depending upon which orbital it's on, we don't really know, but there's some probability. But this isn't even correct. It's even more complicated than that. It's more like the electron is allowed to be in certain orbitals and certain locations, but it may not even have a definite one. It could be in a superposition of all the different possible orbitals, and it's more like it exists in a sort of cloud of probability until we actually make a measurement and we find it to be in one of the definite orbitals. But why do we never find it to be in a superposition if it could be prior to making the measurement? Well, that's the big unsolved problem in quantum mechanics. In my videos, the number one question that people came up against when they thought this through, rightly so, is why does this superposition disappear when the electron interacts with a measurement device or some other thing that causes it to collapse into one of its eigenstates? Or does it even collapse into one of its eigenstates? Because that's actually being debated by physicists as well. So I'm gonna talk about a few main interpretations of quantum mechanics now in regards to my previous videos. There's an interpretation of quantum mechanics called many worlds that says that when we measure the electron and it has one of its eigenstates, then in another universe, it has a different eigenstate. And there's a whole series of universes that can even interact with each other to influence a future outcome. That's unbelievable. It's strange enough to think that we have a multiverse, but then if you look at quantum interference, these multiverses actually interact because they each contribute a phase to the different wave functions associated with them, and these phases can interfere if they're coherent. Another interpretation of quantum mechanics, the Copenhagen interpretation, doesn't bother to go into much detail on what's actually happening physically and says that the mathematics working out is enough that we don't really worry about what it's doing prior to a measurement, which is sort of crazy. So crazy, in fact, that that is the most widely used interpretation in quantum mechanics to this very day. Just to summarize, in the quantum realm, objects can't be said to have definite locations or momentums necessarily. They could have a superposition of different possible momentums and positions going on until we make a measurement and we do get one outcome once we make that measurement.